Obviously, he cared about Iran. He cared about you know, developing Iran. He was very open with journalists. In fact, like a good politician, instead of confronting them, he used them in a very intelligent way. To me personally, he was very friendly. He always tried to, um, to help me. I mean, I, I, we did this campaign. And I saw him in Paris. I, we did a trip to Africa, well, on, to Senegal. Well, I was also trying to show him as a man of power. So obviously, I mean, so that's when he was seated on all the, uh, in, in one of the cities we visited, one of all the officials were around him all, you know, like this. So of course I took the photograph and it reminded me of the picture of Gudusha exactly, in, you know, seated on all the court officials behind him all standing up, you know, with their hands. So that was the way to show power. So yeah, I mean, I mean, they have a whole essay. It was one of my first big essays, you know, on the, this electoral trip. After the electoral tour, he invited a few journalists to his, um, to his home in the north of Iran by the Gaspian Sea, and we had lunch, we spent a few hours with him. No, it was, it was the way he was, you know, was joking all the time, you know. He wanted to show he, off his wife. He, he, he would, he would let, try to put her for the foreground and make her talk to the press, but the, his wife was a very private person, you know, and she didn't care too much you know, about, about that. Before you know, he was taken to court and executed, um, he said, well, you know what all this chulori, all this upheaval, when they, they will stop one day, and then the roads I built, the hospitals I built, the schools I built, they will remain. You know, that was basically his um, last comments. You know. I remember he was taken to trial twice. On the first time, there was such uh, so much noise outside of Iran, you know, so they, they stopped the, um, the trial. And I knew the second trial was coming up. So I remember I was in the office of Yazdi, Ibrahim Yazdi, who was then Minister of Foreign Affairs, and I knew him from Paris, and. I mean, I had a good relation with him. I went to visit him to try to get in inside the prison eventually when they will uh, try him again. And then I learned later on that was exactly the moment when he was being tried and he was executed. And of course, Yazdi, even Yazdi, who was supposed to have been part of the Revolutionary Council, didn't know it was happening. So the last time I saw him, he was lying on a slab in the morgue of Tehran. Now, and there were a couple of bullets in his body. And of course, you know, I was not the only photographer. There were other photographers, and most of them local. And they were fighting about the best angle to photograph, you know. Uh, and of course, this man, I respected him, you know. And suddenly, I see him dead. So how do I react? Um, being a photographer, and it happens a lot of times, you know, it happens in situations of stress, in situations of violence. You put a sort of emotional curtain between you and what you're saying. So, of course, I had the respect for the man. I, was, I would grieve his death, chiefly the way they killed him with a secret trial and just executed. But if I wanted to work as a photographer, I could not let my emotions take over. So as a photographer, of your function, you still choose the best angle, you, you, know, you photograph. And that doesn't mean that you don't feel. And I felt that again in you know, a situation of wars and during the revolution in Iran. You feel a lot, but since you want to function and you put this emotional curtain, what you see goes back in your subconscious. And it's like a time bomb and it explodes you know, through your nightmares. And, I remember Iran, I dreamt, or I had nightmares about Iran for three years after the revolution. Yeah, it would just come back.